So what I'm going to do now that we've talked briefly about what the reactive streams API looks like and the reactive programming API looks like, or reactive programming model and principles look like, we're gonna briefly map the reactive streams API onto the reactive programming principles. So this should look familiar too. It's, it's actually very similar in some ways to our discussion of completable futures, though the mechanisms differ somewhat. So one of the key concepts to achieve responsiveness is not to block the calling thread. So blocking has all these limitations. You underutilize cores, you impede parallelism, you complicate program structure. You can learn more about that at this link down below. And you can see that the way this works in RxJava and Project Reactor is by various methods or operators like subscribe on, publish on, and observe on. And what these can do is they can change the context in which data elements in streams are processed by moving them transparently back and forth between different threads. And so you can hop around between different threads and different types of threads and different pools of threads and so on. Very, very, in a very fine grained way, a very controllable way with RxJava and Project Reactor. You can also avoid changing threads, again, based on how you make the calls to the, the methods, uh, to the methods like subscribe on, observe on, publish on, and so on. So bottom line is you get very fine-grained control in the Rx Java and Project Reactor frameworks to determine how responsive your code is by how you map it onto the underlying threads. With respect to resiliency, the basic idea is to have exception handling methods that are able to have control transferred to them automatically if an exception occurs, and then you can do something in response to that exception. So the idea here is to try to prevent problems from propagating outside of the, the context in which they're, they are um, caught or discovered. Always keep in mind that reactive streams are localized to a single process, not a cluster. So you're just making sure the process doesn't crash. You're not, um, you're not doing anything magical with the way the program works. There's also the concept of elasticity. And what that basically means is you can have the asynchronous computations run scalably in a pool or pools of threads that are multiplexed atop more, more, one or more cores, usually many cores these days with multi-processor, uh, multi-core processors. You'll see that the Rx Java framework has this thing called a scheduler, and it supports a whole slew of different kinds of threads and thread pools there's a computation thread pool, there's an IO thread pool, and so on and so forth. And if you take a look at Project Reactor, they also have a whole boatload of different kinds of threading mechanisms and thread pools. They're very similar in many ways to what you get with RxJava, but they are not identical. And so one of the things you very quickly realize is that RxJava and Project Reactor are not drop-in replacements for each other, although they almost always have fairly equivalent operations, sometimes with different names, sometimes with slightly different semantics. And that's a little confusing at first, but you get used to it. And then finally, we have the concept of message driven. And that just means that under the hood, things are implemented with message passing, with queues. And uh, for example, the fork join pool that we've talked about uses work stealing, uses, using messages to steal various events from one thread in the pool to another. So you can keep utilization going. And the way that all the different mechanisms work to pass messages back and forth between different thread pools also under the hood uses message passing. Although the APIs that you see are method oriented, but the implementations of those APIs are done using message passing. So that's just a quick mapping onto the principles from reactive programming. At this point, you probably are asking yourself, this doesn't sound a whole heck of a lot different from completable futures why do we distinguish between that and reactive streams? So that's what we're going to talk about in the next session.